Are you ready to find out what are the skills you absolutely have to learn and master as a virtual assistant going into AI? In this video, I'm going to dive through and kind of go through a little bit of the basics of what it's like for a virtual assistant to learn and master AI, especially in this day and age where AI is very much easily accessible. Even if you have just free accounts on all of the platforms, all of the profiles, you can have access to it. And AI is not a trend, it's going to be here to Day. It's like someone inventing the internet decades ago. It's the same thing with AI. It's, it's going to be just more and more part of our day-to-day. -day. It's not just something like, hey, this is a cool thing. It's going to be something that's going to stay, something that's going to keep getting better and better as well. So if you're not learning or you haven't dived into how to learn AI, you're not going to be replaced by AI. You're going to be replaced by people who have learned how to use AI. Now, the first skill that you do have to master is honestly curiosity. And this is more of a soft skill. But as you are diving into AI, there's going to be a ton of tools, there's going to be a ton of like tricks and tips that you probably will hear from a lot of other people. But the main thing that you have to keep in mind is to keep an open mind, is to stay curious on learning on what prompt engineering is, which we'll dive into next, on what are the different tools they can use for different outputs that you would need for different ways that you would need it for and learning essentially how AI is constantly developing. So then for you, you are adjusting and keeping your skills open. So as AI keeps, again, getting better and better, you're also getting better and better at using it. Next is to definitely master and learn prompt engineering. So what prompt engineering is, is just kind of like as it's sounded or worded, it's learning how to engineer and write prompts in the best way so you can get the right results every single time. So this is a skill that is not always natural to people, mostly because you know we're kind of taught when you're asking things from AI to kind of keep it generic, but the more specific you are with how you're teaching AI how to work with you, the easier it would be for you to be able to interact and use AI in the best way. So a framework that I've taught on this channel multiple times is the Woe method, which is basically teaching AI all about you before we even get started. So it's giving them the W is basically who you are, what you do, and who you work with. The O is basically the outcome that you need. So whatever it is that you want that AI thread basically or that chat to focus on, you want to make sure that it's as specific as possible. So for example, for me, I have a Lee and Ryder uh, chat GPT so that anytime that I'm writing a post and I can't find the right words or I can't think of the right words, it already has learned my writing style. It has examples of how I write. So that's the outcome. It's like, I want you to write like me. I'm going to give you examples of how I write. The A is asking it, are you ready? And then the H is basically the how do you want to do it? So for example, for me, I prefer ChatGPT to be in bullet form. If it's a you know Facebook or social media post, it has to have really good emojis and hashtags attached to it already. So that's the whole method. It's W who, O is basic outcome, A as are you ready, and H is basically how. So it's a quick and easy framework for you to start learning and diving into how to use ChatGPT in your day-to-day. -day. So then you're not just trying to figure out, kind of blindly trying to figure out what you're doing. It's learning how to essentially train yourself to train AI. That's essentially what prompt engineering is. You're training yourself how to be able to use AI in the best way of how to ask it questions, how to give it feedback, how to make sure that if any time that it doesn't give you the right output that you needed, is that you still give it feedback. Yes, you'll edit it. You'll make sure that it's not your first draft. Make sure that you're not just posting what ChatGPT says as your final draft, but you're also giving it feedback. So then every single time you give it like, hey, can you add this? Can you make this shorter? Can you, um, or this is how I did it. This is how I edited your output. You're teaching AI, again, how to work better with you. Next is you want to play with different AI tools, but of course, don't let yourself get dragged in because there are so many of them. What I really recommend is you start with using ChatGPT and playing around with ChatGPT. And the biggest reason for that, it's kind of a really good playground for you to be able to learn prompt engineering that you can then start attaching to all of the other tools. You can play around with, of course, Canva has AI, Notion has AI, AI. There's so many tools right now that has AI attached to it. And of course, it's there for a reason. But you want to make sure that at least you're kind of getting yourself familiar with it. You're dipping your toe, you're putting your toe into the water, you're getting to the point where you can be more confident playing around with the different AI tools. Next is you do need really good critical thinking skills. And this is because that's one of the things that AI can't really replace us on is the critical thinking. It's double checking the work and again, it's giving feedback. It is thinking things through and not just accepting things as they 
they are and be able to problem solve your way through it. Because AI can kind of mimic that to a certain point, but he still needs like you as the human, as the prompter basically, of giving it the right kind of direction of where to go. And for you as well to know if AI is correct, if not just again, copy pasting what AI says into social media or whatever output you're creating, it is thinking things through and finding out like, hey, this is, is this necessary? Or can this be done better? Or actually, is this is actually not the output that you actually wanted. So it's looking through and actually reading through the output from AI or looking at the images basically or the video it's created and making sure that actually is right, that it makes sense as a human being to see this rather than just accepting whatever the AI said. Next is data organization. Now with AI, there's gonna be a lot of data that's gonna be easy to access for you just like that. And what that means is you need to be the kind of person who knows to organize their data, so then it's easy for you to find. So as a really good example, within the last three years, essentially, or two and a half years since AI came out within 2XU, We've developed a lot of our SOPs, our standard procedures. We've developed a lot of our policies, our contingency plans using AI to basically help develop and kind of have the language be a little bit more uniform. And for us, it, we have really taken the time of learning how to label them, how to make sure that it's easily searchable if we're looking for something, how to make sure that it is up to date, making sure that we have previous versions basically inside of a document so it's easier for us to find it later. So that is what I mean by learning how to organize data because there's going to be more and more things that are going to be so easy for you to access, so easy for you to get with AI. They need to have that skill of learning how to put things into the right place so it's easy for you to find them later. Next is learning how to create content with AI. And essentially what this is, is learning how to create assets with AI. And as a virtual assistant, it might be directly relevant depending if you're managing your client's brand or the client's business, basically their social media, it might be directly like, hey, you have to learn how to use it with Canva, how to use it with ChatGPT or Claude or whatever AI tool that your client might be using. But the key essential part of this is learning how to create really good assets that match the brand, match the voice, match the business essentially. So then you're not just creating generic content that if you were put you know, if you create like a Facebook ad out of AI and you put it side by side with 10 other ads, you can't tell which one is which because it's not customized to the business. So you have to really learn the skill and the art of knowing how to make sure that even if it's AI generated, even if it's redone basically by or repurposed by AI, is you know how to make sure that it still sounds like the brand, like the content, like the asset that you're trying to create. Next is creating startup by procedures or creating systems in general, is you want to learn how to to work with the AI and when to you know, bug the AI about something and when it is your turn. So what I mean by this is I used the example earlier that we've used AI when it comes to creating our SOPs, creating our policies and contingencies, but a lot of that input still had to come from me. And a lot of that input also with AI kind of making that a little bit more uniform, I had to still make sure that it is the right information, that AI wasn't making things up just because it didn't have a piece of information that I wasn't able to provide. So it's learning how to make sure that AI is integrated, but also making sure that you still have that human touch, that human feeling of having someone else look through things to make sure that it actually matches what it was that you're trying to create. And honestly, depending on your client, you can even have it where you create like SOPs based off of your client's feedback, based off of a video. And of course you double checking that. That way it's a great way for you to be able to build out your documentation. So then things can be done the same way every single time. And a lot of that is very easy and very smooth with AI, but again, make sure that you're not using it as a first draft. You're looking through it, you're reading through it to make sure that it actually matches what you wanted it to do in the first place. And of course, you can use AI when it comes to creating templates. So for example, for us, for our onboarding, for taking care of our clients, we have a ton of templates on how we would respond depending on what each kind of person would need. So what that actually would look like is, for example, you know, onboarding email, it's already up there. We can have AI kind of fill in the blanks, but AI help us generate a lot of those templates and assets. So it's easier for us to have the same voice, have the same process with every single time so people can know what to expect. And for us, it also makes it easier as the human being running it to not have to always double, triple check because we know that the template already is in there, has the information that they need to be able to keep moving forward. And lastly, a skill that's really essential for you as you're learning AI is workflow mapping. So what that is, is basically learning how to make sure that it's documented how to get from A to B. So what that means is, for example, I use onboarding as a really good kind of a step-by-step -step thing, is the moment the client pays, what's the workflow for that? Like, what's the 
kind of things you have to set up once a client pays. So it could be like, hey, send them this form, send them the login for this, make sure that they booked a calendar time for this. So if this doesn't happen, if they don't book a calendar invite, you know how to follow up with them, how to make sure that they do the right things. Or if they did book the calendar invite, what are the next steps after that? So it's writing out this map of how to get from A to B whenever something happens within the business. So it's learning not just to create like their SOPs, but how does each SOP interact with each other? How does each system or each trigger interact with different parts of the business that way again you're training not just yourself on how to do that you're also training the ai to know what to expect and you're also making it easier for yourself the next time you have to do the same process as you've already mapped it out because later on the reason why this skill is very essential with using it with ai is you can start building automations you can start building different ways where you know if this happens on notion this email gets sent so that's one of the ways that i've kind of trained a lot of our people instead of 2XU for our virtual assistants where they are starting to learn the if this and that mindset so then later on as we start again using automations and apps and across different ways it's going to be a little bit easier because it's kind of already a skill that's already trained in your brain. Learning AI doesn't have to be this big scary thing it can be this something that is exciting and cool as long as you keep that open mind that curiosity you develop your critical thinking you're able to develop within yourself as well the confidence and how to keep using it and again making sure that you are matching it towards the brand and the business that you're working with now if you guys liked this video make sure to hit the thumbs up button right there comment below any questions you might have on using ai as a virtual assistant i would love to know and if you still haven't yet make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any videos every sunday and thursday on how to work from home and how to build business from home which you guys can check out through to play this right here and the latest video right here hope you guys have an amazing day and remember that small steps matters and i'll see you in the next video bye